Okay, let's talk about the OSAT, or rather the Oklahoma Subject to Area Test, but we're going to be talking about a specific test, and that is the middle level or intermediate mathematics, and the test code there is 125. And we're going to take a look at a practice problem. So if you're uh, watching this video, I'm assuming you are preparing for this exam. So that's excellent. Uh, let me go to introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabba Class Math. I am also a middle and high school math teacher, so I definitely know what it's like to take certification exams and to teach at this level. Um, and one of the things uh, at this particular level, even though it's middle level, middle grade, maybe sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, that you know, oftentimes teachers, if they don't really look at what's on the exam, they think that, oh, maybe I'm going to be tested on the level that I'm going to be teaching on. And yes, you are, but you're also going to be tested on a much more advanced uh, mathematics. So I would classify the math that you need to know for this uh, exam as pretty much like advanced high school level math. And that's a considerable amount of math. Even for so, like for myself taking these exams, I have a degree in mathematics and a master's degree. And, I, you know, you have to study for these exams because not everything is going to be, you know, readily available, you know, in your minds. Even if you're strong in math, and I assume that you are, if you're going to, you know, become a math teacher, you know, don't take, don't take anything at chance because people do fail these exams and have to retake them. So put a lot of effort in studying. It's just going to pay you dividends not only, you know, on the exam, on the test, but, you know, in your profession. So... With that being said, I want to let you know that I actually have a very comprehensive test prep course for this particular exam. I'll leave the link to that in the description of this video. But uh, what I want to do here is kind of challenge you with the practice problem, kind of see where you're at right now. And if you don't get this right, that's not the end of the world. But if you do get this right, it's by no means a 100% indication that you're ready for this exam. But it's just a it's just a practice problem to kind of you know uh, test give you some feedback. Let's just say that much. So here is the problem. Okay. 4x cubed minus 2x squared is equal to zero. I'd like you to solve this. Okay. And even if you're not quite sure how to solve it, I would encourage you to pause the video and at least think about it. Okay. Because this is definitely the type of problem that you could very well see, um, certainly at the level of math that you can see on uh, the OSAT middle level inter intermediate math uh, exam. Okay. So Go ahead and pause the video, think about it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and solve it. So the first thing is we need to know what we're dealing with, okay? Um, so what we're dealing with is a polynomial equation. All right, this is a polynomial equation and it's degree what? Well, degree, okay, it's degree three. Well, what does that mean, degree? What am I talking about? Well, degree is the highest power of the polynomial. So this is written in what we call standard form from highest power to lowest power. So I need to know what, you know, in mathematics, you got to know what you're dealing with before you just kind of take some steps to solve a problem. Okay, we have to kind of classify uh, equa the equation that we're working with because obviously this is an equation and I'm asked to, you know, solve it. So I'm like, okay, I know this is a polynomial and I don't want to go off on too many tangents on why this is a polynomial, but, um, you know, if... You know, oftentimes uh, students will get confused. They'll they'll apply all the um, techniques to solve a polynomial equation, and they might be dealing with an exponential function, logarithmic equation, etc. So you gotta you really gotta again know your stuff. But this is in fact a polynomial equation, which tells us you know a lot of things about it. Um, uh, in other words, um, because it's degree three and it's a polynomial. It says, what do I know about it here? Well, actually, I'll just throw that out to you, okay? A little kind of uh, <laughs> pop quiz. For a polynomial degree three, what do I know about this equation? Well, hopefully, he said, well, there's going to be three solutions. There's going to be three solutions. If you answer that, then that's excellent. But what type of solutions? Well, they're going to be some sort of combination of real or complex numbers, okay? Now, Again, I don't want to go down uh, and take too many tangents here because this is a very in-depth uh, uh, topic on solving um, higher order polynomial equations. But again, hopefully, you know, um, you know, you're following me uh, up to this point. 
Okay, so we know this is a polynomial. It's degree three, and there's going to be three solutions, some combination of either all real numbers uh, and or real or complex numbers. And there's things that we can um, use to kind of test to see what type of equations, but it's not necessary for this particular problem. Okay, but things that you should be aware of, uh, certainly, um, to deal with this problem. Okay, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the actual mechanics of solving it. So the best way to solve a problem like this is a uh, factor, right? We always want a factor. And what can I factor here? What's the greatest common factor? That will be a 2x squared. All right, and this will leave me a 2x right here minus 1, and that will be equal to 0. So if you did that, that's excellent, okay? So just think about it. If I multiply the 2x squared times this 2x, I'd get back to 4x cubed. And then 2x squared uh, times this 1 gets me back to my 2x squared. All right, so now I'm at a point where I can use the zero product property, All right, one of my favorite properties in math, because if you can factor, you always want to be looking for opportunities to factor because this makes our life so much easier. So 2x squared times this quantity, 2x minus 1, is equal to 0. So 1 or both of these have to be equal to 0. So we can set each factor equal to 0. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and solve the uh, remaining uh, equations here. So 2x squared is equal to 0, which means x squared is equal to 0. I'm dividing both sides by 2. So x squared is equal to 0. This is a quadratic equation. In other words, two solutions. Here's my two solutions, right? So my first solution is going to be 0. Okay, I'm just taking the square root of both sides. And my second solution is also 0. So this is what we call a double root. Okay, So I have two solutions here. And now let's go ahead and finish up and solve this equation. This would be 2x is equal to 1. Or x is equal to 1 half. So that would be my third solution. So here my, are my three solutions. And these are all in the real number system. So that's basically the solution, okay? Now, if you just wrote down here, and the reason why I kind of threw in this third degree is that if you just said x is equal to zero and uh, x is equal to one half, you would be two thirds <laughs> correct, okay? Really, uh, one of the things, and I got kind of figured most of you probably would have an idea how to factor this. What I'm looking for is your command of, of uh, of uh, polynomials, okay? Did you realize, that in fact, you were looking for three uh, roots, three solutions? If you did, if you understand everything I'm talking about here and you did it smoothly, that's very, very good, okay? Definitely. Um, but again, it's not 100%, you know, uh, indication that you're ready for everything, but this is the type of level of math that you're gonna be facing on this exam for sure. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Um, so, I've been on YouTube for many, many years, uh, have hundreds and hundreds of videos. So if you like my teaching style, hopefully you consider subscribing. I'm posting all the time, very passionate about putting math videos out there. Uh, so hopefully you consider subscribing. And on my channel, there's a lot of stuff there that can help you prepare uh, for this exam. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Um, are you new to teaching? Are you coming from maybe uh, the elementary level and moving up to middle level to teach uh, math. Just kind of interested uh, in any feedback uh, that you may have. So appreciate some comments. And again, I'll leave a link to my uh, OSAT uh, math prep course for this particular exam. All my courses have taken me years to build and extremely comprehensive. So I think you'll find it very beneficial. But again, you can check that out by clicking the link in the description of the video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your teaching career. Um, uh, you know, only fellow teachers uh, understand how, you know, challenging teaching is, but how rewarding it is as well. So thank you for your time and have a great day.